Who takes to check out the plaza of his position in the plaza? Count the with Sasyama on his sofa. You ready? Yes, you just get the word. There are only two Japan non two non Japanese people in the nearby crowd. Both were eyeing the surroundings anxiously. Kenner was certain the handoff was about to take place. And sure enough What the hell? The second man approached the one holding the attache case. Exchanging a scant handful of words, he took the case and walked off. Sasyama? I'll handle the guy with the case. Got it. Sasyama broke into a run, chasing after the man who'd taken the ransom. Kino hung up the phone and rushed to close the distance with the other man. Tackle! You there, stop where you are! Sasyama turned and Kano recognised his face. He was indeed a member of the foreign crime syndicate that operated in Shibuya. Is the hostage safe? Commando demanded. The man's only response was an unsettling grin. Answer me! But though he repeated the question, the man remained silent. Take out his phone and check. No, no. Take out, take out the handcuffs and reach for the suspect's wrist. And reach for the equipment used with police officers to shackle suspects. In Japan, the belt that makes up part of the officer's duty uniform has a storage pouch with a pair of handcuffs. Oh, okay, cool. Man pulled a knife from his breast pocket and swung it right at Kano's face. Then managed to jerk away in time, but his momentum carried him too far backward and he sprawled onto the pavement. Damn! So he was already making a run for it. Suddenly, a large car the foreign mate skidded to a halt. Blocking the man's escape route. A tall Caucasian man jumped out. He wore sunglasses and a crisp suit. Now cornered, the fleeing suspect brandished his knife. Be careful! But Kano didn't even get the time to finish shouting his warning. There was a metallic ping and a life, and the knife went flying through the air. The man had sunglasses and snapped his right foot up, sending the weapon flying. The tiger's jaw dropped in astonishment, the newcomer proceeded to elbow him right in the face. Look at the suspect went down hard. Ah, ow! The fallen man turned his head to look at Tano. His mouth moved as if he was attempting to say something. He never got it out. The man, the sunglasses, kicked him in the face. The groan, the pope slumped down unconscious. Hey, Kazan, what the hell are you doing? He stormed over the man with the sunglasses. <laughs> Mr. Anderson! The man originally dusted off his suit, and they were ordered to watch them. See where these guys went, right? He spoke fluent Japanese. When a uh, Japanese person who has never been in a situation where you suddenly had to speak to a foreigner, you haven't used English in ages, your attention grows, that you think back to English class in the school, but nothing you remember is helpful. You must have the courage to choke out a stammering, do, do you. The foreigner responds fluently in your own language. Nihiko de do uh, no de dai jobu desu. It's all right, I speak Japanese. What happened to that Japanese sense of honor I've heard so much about? Who, who are you? I'm from the US Embassy's Regional Security Office. The embassy is one of the ambassadors of the foreign country, large and conduct much of their official diplomatic business. Under international law, ambassadors are guaranteed diplomatic immunity, and the embassy grounds are considered territory of the home nation. The US Embassy's Regional Security Office is responsible for the security of American diplomatic facilities and personnel and provides American citizens in Japan with information on public order. It is located in Akasaka in the Minato Ward of Tokyo Metropolis. Huh. He presented Kano's ID. Jack Stanley! Oh god, that's a... that's a bloody, um... Secret Service sounding name, isn't it? Jack Stanley. His title was listed as Security Assistance Officer. Kano glanced at the car he'd showed up in. The license plate was blue with white lettering. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs? But the Ministry wouldn't just send some diplomat to intervene in a police investigation. Kano pulled his phone out of his pocket. Sasyama's name was on display across the LCD screen. How are things on your end, Kenno? I have a suspect in custody. How about you? Sasyama hesitated. He, uh, 
E go with me. What about the Cheshire case? I'm sorry, but you still gotta be around there somewhere. I'm gonna look around for some more. So I see how I'm gonna hang out. Oh shit. <laughs> What's your name, Detective? Jack Stanley asked us. Can I was processing processing this new information? Kino from Shibuya District Precinct. Alright, Kino. I'm gonna need you to follow my instructions for the next while. What is that? Instead of answering, Stanley took out his cell phone and made a quick call. In a few moments, he held the phone out for Kano. Here, permission from your boss, he said. What? Kano squad? He took the phone gingerly, braced himself. Kano speaking. You imbecile! What the hell are you thinking? He was excused from it. He was furious. Understandably so, really. Kano had disobeyed direct order, and for what? All he had accomplished was losing track of the attaché case. I'm sorry, sir. You really think sorry is going to cut it? You're off the force, Kano. There was snubbed defeat at the end of reply. He knew he deserved whatever punishment he got. Still, orders from up top didn't trump the hostage's safety. If he could have gone back and done it all again, he sure would make the same call. Maybe that many wasn't detective material, but so be it. That's what I want to tell you, because it continued. But for now, I need you to follow the instructions of the guy here, Stanley. Do whatever he tells you. Sir? Kano hadn't seen that one coming. He disobeyed orders that was undeniable. And yes, he knew he deserved a reprimand. But being ordered to tag along with some stranger who just turned up out of the blue? What the heck? But what the heck even? May I ask why the US Embassy is involved with this? No more questions, Kano. Step in line. Please, just hold on, sir. I have no idea what's going on here. You let an excess for your sigh. That makes two of us, kid. And with that, the director heart. Ooh. Sounds like even Kuz didn't have the whole story here, which meant that the orders were coming from someplace higher. Foreign syndicate moving the ransom around the US Embassy? Around the US Embassy? Whatever was going on, it was more than just a little kidnapping case, and Kino was deep in the middle of it. He handed the phone back to Stanley. This is like this from the MPD arrived at the scene. Suddenly handed over the foreign criminal to them. You're chasing a bum lead, you know. Say it says it's watching them carry the man away. What do you mean, Kero asked? I mean this kidnapping isn't about the money. My priority is the girl's safety. Right, now your priority is doing what I tell you to do. Kero gave him a scowl, but Stanley ignored it. That man we just uh, arrested, he asked. He tell you anything? No, nothing, Kano said. Really now? Alter's emotion drained from Stanley's eyes. His gaze pierced Kano like icy daggers. It was a glimmer of something dangerous. Something Kano had seen plenty of times since he joined the force. He wasn't looking into the eyes of some diplomatic liaison. No. This was a man who knew how to kill. Who'd killed people before? With some of it, Kano managed to regather his sense, a sense of professionalism. He didn't tell me anything, he appeared. I just know that he's a member of some foreign crime syndicate that works out of Shibuya. I probably know some of their hangouts. Show me, so I say cool as an automaton. We'll take my car. I oh, won't raise some of the sweat that had beat. That had beaded on his brow as they headed for the vehicle. He was just sliding into the passenger side seat when Kate Kuzu radio over the wires. Oh, you know, folks, listen up. Childish tone was back in his voice full force. Kino stepped on the new facts. He knew what that meant. So, uh, he told me Asara was, like, gone. Has, like, gone missing. What? Kino couldn't believe his ears. Wasn't. Tatino is supposed to be protecting her right now. Also, uh, Detective Tatino hasn't been in either. And, like, we can't reach him from our end either. No way, Kano blurred out. It can't be. So, yeah, because it could do. He might have gotten caught. caught up in this incident, too? Wasn't like detective of Tatino as such as to go in com in Con Kumaro during investigation. 
It could only mean something had happened to him. Something major. And boom! To be continued. <laughs> Fucking hell. Three hours and we just managed to finish one hour block. Jeez.